on the record here of Horodesky yeah. versus Johnson. Can you get up? Yeah. I don't. And I will have the attorneys um, put their appearance on the record as well as the guardian ad line. Okay. And everybody uh, can stay seated. It's fine. Um, Fran Fine, bar number 25, present with the plaintiff, Christopher Hordesky. Oh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Amber Robinson, bar number 10731, on behalf of defendant Amber Johnson, who's present. And Lynn Conant, bar number 8036, as the guardian of Leiden for the minor child, Hayden. Did I steal your pen? Pardon? Yeah, yeah, you did. All right, so so that the uh, Mr. Horodesky and Ms. Johnson understand what was going on in the hallway, um, I asked to see the parties because I was concerned um, uh, very frequently in cases like this, 13-year-olds, um, whether anybody intends to or not, uh, conversations are engaged in, maybe the 13-year-old overhears them, maybe parents don't realize that they're saying things that the 13-year-old will interpret um, with regard to the litigation, but mostly 13-year-olds try to manipulate parents. And so the point of today's hearing was two things. One was to determine that, um, that a therapist had actually um, been engaged and uh, the parties have um, indicated to me that they did agree on a therapist. And Ms. Fine, if you would state that name for the record. Marie Mullen. And um, the Ms. Mullen, their parties are going to schedule an appointment uh, for Hayden with her. Um, but she does need an order from the court uh, and from the last hearing that was delayed um, because the parties have been working on the guardian ad litem. So Ms. Fine will make sure that order gets to uh, the court for uh, review and signature by noon tomorrow, which then will allow Ms. Mullen to start with the therapy sessions with Hayden. Um, the uh, original suggestion for guardian ad litem was uh, Ms. Dieter, However, she had a conflict of interest, so the parties had agreed on Lynn Conant. And Ms. Conant is present and has had a number of uh, meetings with Hayden and um, with uh, the parents. So, um, and I have her report today. So the therapist will communicate with Ms. Conant. And those reports will not be sent to me unless Ms. Conant, after discussing it with counsel, um, determines that this is something that I need to see. And I say I actually would be the judge since um, there will be a permanent judge assigned to this department probably in the next two weeks. Um, and Ms. Connick, one of the things that I discussed in the hallway was that she is here to be Hayden's representative to the court in a sense. That's what a guardian ad litem does. And um, there is one issue that struck me that, to me, um, reeks of um, teenage kind of manipulation, and that's that Hayden's grades go up and down whenever Hayden feels like it or doesn't feel like it. And when the parents are having difficulty communicating and there isn't um, a good co-parenting between the parents, and these two parties certainly do not have that between them. I am aware of the long litigious history in this case. I've read the notes um, and the court record. Um, the, there's a situation in which at some point Hayden needs to understand that there are consequences regardless of the parents on his own actions or inactions in life. And at 13, um, you know, as you start getting into it, what you do in high school and what you do in the rest of your life can be driven by high school and by grades. Um, he's perfectly capable of getting A's and B's when he applies himself. He's also perfectly capable of just deciding to screw around and not turn in his assignments um, when he um, chooses to do so for whatever reason. 
and it's very difficult for either of you as parents to totally control that um, because teenagers are teenagers. So one of the things that I think um, the guardian ad litem should be doing here is that Hayden needs to have certain set rules imposed by this court. So it's not a rule coming from mom, and it's not a rule coming from dad, but it's a common sense rule that I think needs to be applied. And the guardian ad litem, Ms. Conant, will discuss this with Hayden, not the parents, because she needs to make it clear to Hayden that um, playtime is over. And uh, he needs to apply himself if he wants to be treated as a young adult, then um, part of being a young adult is accepting responsibilities. So Hayden very much wants telephone conversation with his parents when he's with the other parent. And so we're going to set up a time period where during the week, um, he needs to finish his assignments that he needs to turn in the next day, his homework, and then he can have a 10-minute phone call with the other parent. And if for any reason he's struggling with that homework and he just doesn't think he's going to get it done, well, that's what his guardian non blindum is for. He certainly should be asking his parents for help, and his parents both have work schedules that allow each of them um, to sit down and work with him. And so he needs to first ask his parent if he's truly struggling, as opposed to, I'd rather be playing my video game, I'd rather be playing with my um, uncle, I'd rather be doing stuff with, with my grandparents or other relatives, um, anything but sitting here and doing my homework. Um, but if he truly feels that he's struggling and for some reason um, he's just not getting the help that he thinks he should get, you know, he's got a guardian ad litem. She's okay with everything but algebra. Um, we're laughing because that was just, you know, sometimes some people don't do as well with math or English or other things. But he needs to know that, that that's what he needs to get done. And the parents will have a responsibility. Before, um, you need to check every day to see that he's turned in his assignments. We're also going to issue an order. Now, the Clark County School District may not abide by this, and if not, then each of you can give your passwords to the guardian ad litem. But we're going to see if the Clark County School District will allow the guardian ad litem to have her own independent password so she can check it. So that way it's not, it's not mom being the bad guy or dad being the bad guy. He's going to know, I'm going to be checking your stuff. Ms. Connick's going to tell him because the judge told me to, because the judge wants to know that you're knuckling down. You know, you do great things, you have great relationships, you do great things with each of your families. Um, you know, I absolutely appreciate that he's very proud of the things that he can accomplish with each family and, and doing things, but he needs to know that, you know, the important things for life as you become an adult is to do those kinds of things. Um, and he should be doing his homework at a set time every day. And, you know, generally I would think he'd just come home from school, have a snack, you know, take, take a half an hour break, and then knuckle down on your homework. Um, because once you get out of the way, it's amazing how free you feel and how many other things you can do. And frankly, um, as you get into that kind of structure, um, you actually get done faster because you're focused on it. I recognize some kids maybe do better if they can play first and then do their homework in the evening. I'm not certain that he's one of those children, but if he's got alternatives, he can discuss it with the guardian ad litem so long as he's reasonably doing what he needs to do. Um, because I don't want to cut him off from expressing something, but I don't want him whining to either parent about it, because that's, that's the point. Um, and I know each attorney is going to have about two minutes here to comment about you know, their, their client's concerns about what I'm discussing. 
um, and they expressed their concerns. That's why we spent so much time so the attorneys could express their concerns and advocate for their clients um, because I wanted to make sure that they had that ability. Um, but it's much easier to do that um, when you have four adults talking than it is in a litigation setting and sometimes we do that. That's why we do those conferences um, uh, rather than, than spending an hour trying to <clears throat> mold this all on a record when what we're doing is tossing ideas away. Um, the, um, the reports themselves, um, Ms. Connick's reports, the attorneys will ha always have the ability to read through them. We do not disseminate them. And we don't do that because um, when specific, when, when parents have a tendency to read things, then they have a tendency, at, they just can't resist it. At some point, they want to discuss that with Hayden because Hayden's talking about his feelings about both parents. Well, that's, right now, that's not a good thing for Hayden. Um, but the attorneys need to know it so that if there's something in there that affects the litigation, they have that, and that's why they've reviewed those reports and had their uh, abilities to discuss it. Um, if Hayden doesn't start taking things seriously, then Ms. Connick can explain to him, you know, um, one of the reasons the judge is doing this is because it doesn't require, and she'll phrase in whatever way she thinks it's best, but this isn't mom and dad agreeing on something. This is the judge giving me instructions. And if you can't knuckle down and show that you're honestly doing what you need to do, well, then i got to tell that to the judge, and I don't know if the judge isn't going to say, you know what, I think we need to impose other sanctions. Um, because that's one of the things that we appointed the guardian and the therapist from was to try and create some independent objective things in a very litigious case where the parents have had a great deal of difficulty co-parenting and communicating. Um, the, um, uh, we're also going to, I'm going to implement a program uh, called Talking Parents. You'll be doing the paid program. It's about a little over $5 per month. And what happens is that all of your communications now will go through talking parents. That's because it keeps it. You Once that conversation gets into it, it can't be altered by either party. So that means it's an absolute rec ob objective record on a third party site the information can be downloaded by your attorneys if they choose to do so at some point in time. But it's sort of like, frankly, you know, having a monitor on the communications because since you can't change them or alter them, the full communication is always available. Whereas it's been my experience that when people text um, and they start giving me screenshots and photographing the screenshots and then we always have the argument where's the beginning of the text, where's the end of the text. The same thing with email, you get the email stream but you don't always get all the email stream and there's always the arguments, wait there was an email before this or after this. Well, you know, the attorneys know that by using that site um, it's all going to be there. And so that's one of the, the issues. Uh, Ms. Conant, will not discuss, um, will not do regular interviews or discussions with the parents per se. Um, she obviously has to s talk to the parents, um, but she's not really a go-between between the parents. That's not her purpose. Um, she w can address with you concerns that she may have with regard to Hayden and for Hayden's benefit. Um, but if there are truly other issues, then those really should continue to be communicated with your, with your uh, attorneys. Um, but she will communicate with you if she looks at things and says, you know, um, I, I think Hayden needs to do this or Hayden needs to do that, and I think you both need to work on, and here's my suggestions for what you both need to work on. And when she does that, um, she'll talk to both of you at the same time on a phone conversation so you both hear it the same way. That's, that's what she does from an ethical standpoint. 
Um, so, uh, and then the order for today um, encompassing um, everything that I've put into place would be done by uh, Ms. Robinson, um, and obviously Ms. Farin will sign off on it. Council, um, you know, you can put on the record, I know that there were some concerns that you expressed, so you can indicate what those concerns are. I'll give you a couple of minutes each. And then if either any of you, and Ms. Conant as well, think I forgot something, because we did spend quite a bit of time and we tossed a number of ideas around for what would be in Hayden's best interest. Um, and so, Ms. Um, Ms. Fine, as you represent plaintiff, I'll let you make whatever comments you think you need to make for the record. Of course, indulgence. Um, after being involved with this case for 13 years, uh, my client has faith in the system, amazingly enough, and he's, I could tell by his face and the, the hand signals that he was grateful that you're taking the time that you took today in addressing this, knowing that you're not the permanent judge. I am so grateful myself for the time that was taken, and I believe that with this guidance that this little boy, this young man has a shot. Um, but I would like, we did discuss, um, I just want to make sure that I'm on the same page. I know that you said a great deal, but I want to make sure that, that it's, a, it's a reward and it's an, it's an incentive for him to get his homework done. That is correct. No one's trying to punish Hayden. We're trying to make him, what we're right basically saying is before you can do other things and mess around. You got to put your homework as your first priority, and, and then talk talking to, to your parents is a priority. But it's let's get your work done first, then deal with other things. So it and is intended to be something of a reward, and we do need to. You probably need to give me some input on when's a good time every night when he can talk to the other parent. Um, we did discuss kind of limiting it to about ten minutes, um, but. Um, I'm not trying to super regulate too much, but I am trying to make Hayden understand there's, there has to be some consistent structure in his life if he's going to improve in school, and I think that's really the issue. Well, both parents will be needing to check the portals each night to make sure that his homework is in, and they can communicate that to Ms. Conant, is that correct? That is correct. They're not going to be doing the... Uh, the discussion with Hayden about it, they'll simply tell Ms. Conan, look, I checked and he didn't turn it in. Um, hopefully she can have her own access, um, and then if the school district won't give her her own access, then we'll discuss whether or not both parents feel comfortable just giving their passwords so she can do it directly. I'm grateful. Thank you. I don't think I have anything else. I'll defer until Ms. Robinson is done. Um, court's indulgence. Thank you for the time. Ms. Roberts? Um, while it's still fresh, because my client just brought it up, is sometimes there's a delay on the, they call it parent link, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a delay showing that you have missing assignments when you really don't. Um, I think both parents can agree to that. So how do we monitor if assignments mm -hmm. have been turned in, but it's showing online that it hasn't, that he can call dad or vice versa, he can call mom, if it's showing there's missing assignments? No, I think what, hold on just a second. Do you agree, sir, that sometimes that happens? There's a lot of fluctuation. Like, they'll say he's got an F one day, then it turns around and he's got an A the next day. But I think even with the delay, if we can communicate, at some point it's got to catch up with itself. Okay, why don't we do this then? Um, you'll communicate it, and... Um, I mean, I can give her my access. I um, have no problem with that. And Don't then she can discuss it. Let's, let's give it the like a 24-hour period or, a, or so, you know? Well, sometimes it can even be up to a week, and I know that too from my own teacher <coughs> friends, that it's kind of when they put, it, take the time to input their it's current the parent things. checking their, their child's homework to make sure it's done before they can have the phone call. Not whether or not it's been reported, it's been submitted to the, to the school. It's when... Well, Dad actually, actually what we discussed was verifying that the reports that were due the previous day had all been turned in. 
I and see. verifying that. So I think, now obviously the parents too, because I didn't want to put it on the parents, because then the other parent's going to say, well, he tells me that he did get his work done, and we didn't want to have those conversations with Hayden, because that's not helpful. Um, so I think the issue is, why don't we do this? Um, <coughs> we can we can check the assignments and just say that um, on a Monday you'll check to make sure all the assignments for the previous week were done. And if they're not, then we're not going to have phone visits that week. But the point is, is that if he does his homework today and Dad checks it, he goes, you're done. You did a great job. And, but he has to really check it, not just well, look at it. Right. Yeah, he has he to look at it, make sure it's both, compliant. Both parties should be doing that. And then that night he calls his mom right after he's so, done. But, but I don't want to give Dad the authority to say, or Mom, um, you didn't do your homework, <clears throat> don't. Because if he hasn't turned it in, we'll know that. And otherwise, the issue is going to be, um, Dad said I didn't get my homework, or Mom said I didn't get my homework done. Um, and the other parent's going to say, well, Hayden tells me that he did get it done. That's exactly what's going to occur. So, or, Ms. Connick, do you have a suggestion for how to address this? For tracking the assignments? The only thing I was thinking, Judge, and it might be a bit of a problem, um, I, I've known several parents who've had this problem, and is perhaps he can have, and I don't know if this is possible, an assignment log, and the teacher will initial it if he's turned in the assignment. Great idea. That's, that's a good idea. The, that's that excellent. That takes the pressure off of everyone. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Cohen. I wasn't aware that the <coughs> delay was that great, but I can see that teachers have a number of students in their class. They may not get all the assignments logged in. And, and the way the school district is set up, when you don't turn in an assignment, um, it automatically is considered a, it, it does a grade deduction. There's a point deduction for not turning in your assignments. And then there's a penalty if you don't turn them in within a certain number of days thereafter. The teacher can take that out, but the teacher has to do that manually. So I, I see where that comes in. Also, if um, uh, Ms. Conant, you had another suggestion to deal with in terms of um, phone calls or no? No, I, I, I just wanted to make sure because I. Mm -hmm. I talked about the fact that you were going to be the one to tell them about the parents. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm going to be the one. To, I'm going to be the one to deliver the news about the phone calls. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I, want, I, want, I don't want mom Not and dad yet. to have to worry about that, um, because I, th I think it would be better if it comes from somebody else who said, I "Want you to talk to mom and dad, but you have to earn some of this. Uh, what what we perceive to be a uh, benefit. I have him do that." A couple issues on um, on the phone specifically and privacy. Um, I just want to clarify that it's going to be Chris providing the cell phone, um, that there's already a working line. That was my understanding from you, Ben. He has a he picks up your phone or he uses the house phone? landline. The landline. Mm -hmm. You want to let him use your phone so we can track you it and make sure that he can use. No, he calls so you. So we're going to use landlines then? Yeah, well, he's not responsible with the cell phone. He's ran up all kinds of bills with my phone, my mother's phone, my wife's phone. Okay. Jesus. If we the landline could, is right if we there. Take that he can use number, the landline. Right? That's fine. Well, he's going to be calling, so you don't. Well, and I want to make sure the calls, I'm sorry, Judge, are, oh, I see. are, are bi-directional. Okay. okay. I need to make sure that Hayden, when he's at Mom's house, is told, time to call Dad. Okay, because um, I've, I've been told that Hayden typically doesn't call Dad when he's at Mom's. But I, I think that's important to do. Right, we're going to set up a time every night when the call takes place. When does Hayden go to sleep? What time does he go to sleep? Uh, at our house, 8 o'clock is bedtime. And at your house? About 8.39. Okay, so why don't we say that the calls will take place at 8 o'clock? Every night for 10 minutes. 8 o'clock for 10 minutes. Okay, and Hayden will initiate. Hayden gets privacy when he does it, so he should be calling and nobody else should be listening in or, or watching him. He's allowed to just talk to his parent. Do we know the landline number? Go ahead. 
It's my phone, not yours. Oops. Don't ever use it. <laughs> Seven zero two, seven four nine, six nine seven eight. And I concur with Ms. Fine's statements. Um, what she said at the beginning when she started speaking was, "Thank you for taking the time with us, Judge, today. I think um, this is moving the case forward in a positive direction." I did, and I brought up some of the stuff outside. Um, I wanted to just make a record. I know we have some orders, um, but I just wanted the court to be aware, and I wanted my client to hear that I am telling the judge. Um, so we're thankful for the telephone communication um, because it has been blocked and email communication has been extremely monitored. As, for example, the beginning of March 2019, he didn't email right when he got to school, um, before school even started, saying, hey mom, you know, how was your weekend, how are you and the doggies? Um, she replied back right away and Chris apparently has access to this email because he forwarded from that school account to his attorneys, basically, like, see, he's talking to mom. Well, the parents do have access to the school accounts, okay, and there's a reason for that, um, because some kids in the school district use their accounts. But it was almost as if it was a bad thing that he was I, talking about. I'm mom. not. I'm not. Because one of the things that we, and you did bring this up, and what I said was, this is why we have a guardian ad litem, okay? If Hayden feels that um, he's having difficulty with either parent um, about certain issues or things, then the guardian litem can talk to him about it, and she can try and determine whether this is teenage behavior, or is this a true problem, or what's the circumstance. Because, frankly, Hayden shouldn't be using his school email at school, or even right before school, to be engaging in chats with either parent. I mean, that's the, the point is, when he's at school, he should be paying attention to school. Now, right before school, clearly, is not a problem, but, but you know, that, th those are the issues that Hayden needs to be bringing up with the guardian and ad lighting with Ms. Conant, um, and Hayden's gonna be told that by her. Look, if you think you're having communication problems, you need to discuss that with me. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we're still concerned with that I did not bring up out there was that Hayden is still not enrolled in sports, and this was a previous recommendation by Dr. Ali, um, who has treated his ADD. So we would um, like to see that move forward with him being enrolled in sports. The parents, I suppose, can talk about this on Talking Parents, but I wanted to put that out there on the record today. I think they can, and Hayden hasn't <coughs> expressed any interest in being enrolled in sports at the moment. Um, but that's something the guardian ad litem can talk to him about. What do you like to do? What kind of sports do you like? What, um, he wasn't, you know, but, but he can't be doing sports if he's not cracking down on his grades because, A, they don't let you play sports unless you're keeping your grades consistent. And B, that's a part of the situation. Again, um, the parents can talk. Um, but They can talk, and if they can come to an agreement, we'd all be more than pleased. My client would just recommend, because they live so far apart from each other, as the court knows, maybe they could look at sports that would be more equidistant. You might, you might want to look at sports that are league sports. Um, those are sometimes paid, um, but you can look at league sports. You can, instead of sports that are through the school itself, because sometimes those can be done um, in, in things. And sports don't have to be general, but let the, the you know, the parties can make suggestions to each other, but, um, but really let's let the guardian talk to him first about that, about, you know, listen, if you get your grades up, what other kinds of extracurricular activities would you like to do? Is there a sport that you're interested in? Um, you know, do you want to do, do, do you want to do dance? Do you want to do painting? I mean, you know, people have a tendency to want to talk about the big three, as it were, football, battle, or big four, football, basketball, uh, soccer, and, and uh, baseball. Um, but there are all sorts of activities out there for kids that have, you know, that, that might be a good thing for him. I don't know. He, he, 
He expressed that he enjoyed doing some of the building projects, I guess he did, with his maternal um, grandfather. Um, maybe he'd like to learn more about, you know, carpentry or working with things. I don't know. But right now, he needs to focus on his grades. So. Um, the one other thing I wanted to bring up is that the court reiterated last time that Dad can't have the child just go see whatever therapist he wants, and especially no, not No, everybody well. has agreed that the only therapist is the one that was selected by the parties. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, Hayden went to Mr. Collis, K-A-L-A-S, again in the month of March after Dad was already told, no, you can't do that. Hayden what? went and saw him, I think, on March 12th. It was family therapy, not for him yeah. specifically. It was just, he's been seeing this therapist for years, but we'll stop that now that we know we can get to Breeze. There will no be, no There'll involvement. There will be no other Dallas. involvement. Thank you. Okay. And Trust me, I, I think the rest of the issues are, are being are we Anything else? Another status check, Judge? Um, honestly, with this case, it probably makes sense. Um, 90 days. Does that work? Great. Right. That'll yeah. get the new judge up to speed, and, uh, and I will make a notation to just let the new judge know about the case. And, you know, it's going to be quite a file to read. June 18th at 11 a.m. Well, That's 90 judge. days? Wow. Hmm. I'm sorry, what time was that? 11. Thank you. Wait, I mean, it's a little longer. I guess. That's fine. Yeah. That way, and it'll be a status check to make sure that the therapy sessions have started um, and for Ms. Conk to report on how our new uh, structure is working. Judge, okay. and I just, I, I mentioned this to you and to counsel. Um, I just happened to call Ms. Mullins on another matter yesterday. Um, she's not, so that both parents are, no, she's not seen anyone until mid-May. So is there any way, we, is there anyone else that, Amber, that you can recommend that you like? Yeah, because she did the research already on those I screenings. love Brie Mellon. Yeah. I think she's awesome. Yeah. I, I think with the guardian in place and him having that ability to, to, to talk to the guardian, Thank you. another month is not going to make or break. Hayden, and he's got to get used to these new rules and structure as well. So, so I'm presuming now that everybody agrees Hayden comes home for school, can mess around for half an hour, and then he needs to tackle his school assignments. Okay? All right. And then if he wants to, if he thinks there should be a better way, then he can talk to Ms. Conk about that. And that way he's not saying to mom or to dad, you know, and then mom or dad are agreeing, well, okay, in my house you can do it this way. and Because that's what we're trying to avoid here. We're trying to create a consistent structure. Why we hope at some point, before he turns 18, some communication can occur. So, All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge.